So you, like me, bought an electric vehicle, sold on the promise of less servicing, it being more environmentally friendly and cheaper to maintain, but is that entirely true? Most EVs use a reduction gearbox, also known as a reduction gear or single speed transmission, to convert the high speed rotation of the electric motor into usable torque for the wheels. These gearboxes are typically filled with lubricant or gear oil that some manufacturers label as a lifetime fluid, implying it doesn't need to be changed under normal use, whatever that is. It's also great marketing for manufacturers to promote their cars as having lower maintenance requirements, costs, and with more eco-credentials. However, the term lifetime fluid is often defined by manufacturers as the expected service life of the vehicle, which may coincide with the warranty period or average length of first ownership. This does not mean that the fluid will last indefinitely or that it will never degrade or become contaminated. After that warranty ends, any failures or wear-related issues become the owner's responsibility and any associated costs are coming out of your pocket, not theirs. Sure, gearbox and oil technology has come a long way and are more durable than they used to be. In particular, EV reduction gearboxes are simpler than traditional ones, with fewer components to wear out and contaminate the oil, which reduces the perceived need for frequent oil changes. But in this video, I'm going to show you how I change my oil and why you should too if you want to get the most out of your electric vehicle. Welcome back to the channel, my name is Shan. So first things first, let me show you how I changed the reduction gearbox oil on my 2017 Nissan Leaf, which to the best of my knowledge has not had this done before. And just for information, it's covered just over 66,000 miles to date. I'll tell you what I used as we go along and everything you need for this job will be linked in the video description box below. It's important that your car is level to cut the oil out. My driveway is on a slight incline and so I'm gonna have the car up on a couple of my Malenko ramps to get it level. Remember to use some wheel chocks. To get started, you'll need to remove the splash shield. This is arguably one of the most tricky bits of this job as the 10 millimeter bolts on the front commonly rust and can snap whilst you're trying to get them off. So do take your time. It's always sensible to have some spare bolts and plastic clips to replace any that break. This isn't the first time I've had my splash shield off and before I put it back on the last time, I coated the bolts in Lanigard grease, which has protected them really well, as you can see. I'm going to be under the passenger side of the front of the car, looking towards the middle, and you can see the reduction gearbox and fill and drain plug as indicated. You'll need a 10mm hex bit to loosen off the bolts. It's always sensible to start with and make sure you can loosen the fill bolt, as if you do it the other way around and empty the oil and can't get the fill bolt out, you'll be a bit stuffed. Once the drain bolt is loose, make sure you've got something big enough to catch the old oil shooting out. So you can see the sludge and filings on both plugs here, which are cleaned off with some blue roll, and you can see how different the old oil looks compared to the new stuff. More on this later in the video. It's important to replace the washers when you're changing the oil, which helps to ensure a reliable seal, prevent leaks, and maintain the integrity of your gearbox. I bought some new copper ones which can be reused, whereas the outgoing aluminium ones can't. And you can see these fit perfectly. I replaced the drain plug, torque wrenches to 34.5 newton meters, and dropped some rubber tubing down with a funnel attached to the end. It's important that the hose diameter is small enough to fit into the fill port. Refill the reduction gearbox with a compatible oil. And I've dropped the link to this correct Matic S oil that you will need for the Nissan Leaf in the video description box below. You'll need to use approximately 1.4 litres. Replace the fill plug once the oil starts trickling out, being careful not to under or overfill it. Finally, torque up the fill plug again to 34.5 litres meters, and you're done. So, as you probably noticed, the old oil that came out of the production gearbox looked nothing like the new stuff that I put back in, and looked a bit like black coffee. But is that normal? The original Nissan Matic S gear reduction oil is the same red colour when new. However, it's generally considered normal for the reduction gearbox to discolour over time, even at low mileages like 10,000 miles from heat cycles and oxidation over time. This darkening also typically occurs due to the normal wear of the gears and bearings, which releases fine metallic particles into the oil. The fill and drain plug I removed are magnetic, and you can see the particulates that are built up on these over the lifetime of running the vehicle. As these magnetic plugs become more saturated, their ability to attract and hold additional particles is reduced, allowing more fine metallic debris to remain suspended in the oil, which can contribute to the oil darkening. 
This fine debris is generally a normal byproduct of regular gear and bearing wear. However, if the quantity of the metallic debris increases, or you notice larger or sharp metallic particles, like this leaf owner found when they did theirs, it can signal abnormal wear or damage inside the gearbox, such as worn gears, failing bearings, or other internal component issues. So, some discoloration is expected, not an immediate cause for concern, and indicates that the oil is picking up contaminants from normal gearbox operation. But has my Nissan Leaf performed any better? And is it more efficient since changing the oil? Although the main benefit of changing gearbox oil is long-term reliability and protection against wear, not a dramatic or immediately perceptible boost in efficiency or performance. It does feel smoother to drive, but I suspect this is entirely subjective, especially as my old oil was not severely contaminated. I've not noticed any improvement in efficiency yet, and there are likely to be several confounding factors, making it difficult to interpret which fits with other owners' reports that any improvement in miles per kilo hour is minimal and often not noticeable in everyday driving. If the old oil was heavily contaminated or degraded, a fresh oil change could slightly reduce internal drag, which in theory might improve efficiency. So while the reduction gearbox fluid in most DBs is labelled as lifetime by the manufacturers and in theory doesn't need to be changed, this typically aligns with the expected warranty or first owner period not the indefinite life of the car. The primary advantage of changing the reduction gearbox oil is for inspection, preventative maintenance, and prolonging the life of the gearbox. The oil, hose, and copper washers cost me around 40 pounds. I already had or borrowed from a neighbor some of the tools I needed for the job, which made it a fairly inexpensive procedure. If you're planning to keep your EV beyond the warranty period, a reduction gearbox oil change is a relatively inexpensive measure to reduce the risk of developing issues later down the line. And although there is no specific servicing window for this fluid, I'll probably do it again in around 35 to 40,000 miles once the car's reached 100,000 miles. If you're an electric vehicle owner in the UK and you're wondering which electricity tariff is best for charging your vehicle, then check out the Eon Next Drive tariff, which gives you a massive 7 hours of off peak charging for all your electric use at 6.7p per kilo hour and importantly is fixed for 12 months. And if you do decide to join Eon, they offer £100 account credit split between you and the channel and I'll drop the referral link in the video description box below. If you do choose to use our referral link, then thank you. It really helps keep the channel going. If you found this video useful or learned something new, please subscribe to the channel to keep up with new content related to electric vehicles and charging. And feel free to check out some of our other videos appearing on your screen right now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.